Hello, everyone, and welcome to Girlfriend to Girlfriend. I'm Ali Jabour, the founder and creator of Girlfriend to Girlfriend and the Girlfriends Club. Thank you so much for joining us on the eve of Cinco de Mayo, where I will be joined by two powerhouses that are infamous in the New York area. Of course, you know um, my girlfriend, Jane Hansen. She has been co-hosting with me on and off this whole time. Here she is. And she's in the Big Apple. I am. I am. I are. My margarita. I forgot about Cinco de Mayo. Yes. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I know. Big plans. I guess you're going to be making when we when we're done. You know, last year during COVID, I I um, there actually this magazine called Flower Power did a whole story about it because the girlfriend that I'm actually staying with here. She came over to my house out on Long Island, and we had this Cinco de Mayo thing with all these. We had all kinds of fake flowers and really great drinks, you know, just the, nobody else around, but <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. People took pictures of it and put it in this magazine. It was a riot. So I think it'll be a little different scenario tomorrow in Manhattan. That's I for do sure. Too. I'm, I'm grateful. It's interesting being back here. It's busy. There's a lot more traffic than the last time I was here. A lot of people, um, a lot of restaurants are still closed though. In a, and it's very difficult. You know what else a restaurant owner told me that was so funny? He said, because during COVID, everybody got used to going out much earlier because they have to, I think they still yes. close down at nine o'clock at night. The restaurants are jam packed at 530 and you can't get a reservation and you can't get in. Now that never used to be the case. Remember, we'd never. make fun of people who went to dinner at 530. Well, let me tell you, it's a much, much healthier way of eating. It is. Because according to Dr. Darrell. That's right. Okay. He says you should finish dinner and have a 14 hour fast. I agree. And actually meals. I do most days. So I do. Because I, do. I rarely eat. I don't eat breakfast. Sorry. But you know, I'm not, I'm not hungry then. If he's watching, you're going to get, you know, in trouble. <gasps> I saw that he was on with Kelly and Ryan. Oh, he was? He was yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So I thought that, I thought that was pretty cool. But um, he does a lot with Kelly. So. Yeah, well, he really, you know, he saved her from her jelly bean drawer. <laughs> I was like, she has a jelly bean drawer? How nice. He didn't save me from my pretzel bag. Oh, yeah. That's a problem that we I... We all have our thing. We all have our thing. We what do. can I say? No, no. I'm just, I'm, I like salt. I'm a salt girl. Well, I there's nothing wrong with either. Um, I have to say that I am just so thrilled um, that you introduced me to Bill Evans. Well, I mean, what a nice he's man. He's now a Long Island boy. Yes, he is. He's a Long Island boy. Although I and saw him down in Florida on his boat. Greatest gig ever to, to <laughs> do a radio show from the back of a boat. Cause just think about, just think about that. He just rides around this boat and does shows. And he just does it and it's come so naturally. And I mean, he's certainly, well, let's bring him on. Or let him talk for himself. <laughs> I guess we can talk in front of him instead of behind him. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Always better that way. <laughs> New York legend Bill Evans and Jane oh, Hansen. Long wow. To see. This is a real <laughs> kick for me. Thanks. Thanks a lot for having me. Yeah, you're so girlfriending with us. This is yeah. Fun. We're letting you into the club. You're an honorary I, one. I know. I know you I'm, misbehave. <laughs> I'm very. I'm very honored. Thank you very much. Well, I wanted to say just to the audience, for those of for those that are not in the New York metro area, Bill Evans for 30 years was our chief meteorologist at uh, uh, WABC television here in New York. And um, if you just hear his voice, you know that it's Bill Evans. You don't even need to be watching him. He's on the radio, which we'll, we'll get to. But you know, you really, um, I think, you have an incredible, um, what's the word? Reputation, perhaps, or yeah, or legendary or reputation. Iconic. Everyone knows you. Here okay, we go. The head's getting swollen. Okay, Take I gotta go now. <laughs> <laughs> Enough with you two. <laughs> yeah, really. But I, <laughs> as, as, <laughs> you know, as they say in Hollywood, enough about me. Yeah. About <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So but we were serious. getting. Yeah, I mean, so it, it's so funny because when I first started in the TV business, oh, so many years ago, um, and obviously I was at WNBC for almost 30 years, mm -hmm. um, 
so we were friendly competitors, but the only girl women could get at first was being a weather caster. And then they yeah. took that away from us. Although my good buddy Janice yeah. is still at yeah. WBC and has been for a long time and she's amazing. Um, so I love And her. she's revered. She really Absolutely. is. You know, Absolutely. she's totally revered. I mean, she had um, such a good time together, but people always, people always used to make such fun because they go, those weather people with all those contraptions, don't they just like stick their finger out the window and go, yeah, the wind's blowing. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, all, the, all the time. I was always Regis's foil on the show. You know, there would be a snowstorm and after I'd got through doing the morning show, you're very tired as you know, by nine o'clock. Right. And you, you would get hustled down to, you know, uh, Regis and Kathy and then Regis and Kelly. And then of course, Regis sits you there and like, he's already had about five cups of coffee. He's ready to go. And he looks at you and he goes, you weather people are crazy. You <laughs> <laughs> a huge storm and it's nothing. You know, he would just yell. And, but he did more for my career. He and Don Imus uh, and Scott oh. Cannon on radio. That oh, was a perfect yeah. Regis. Yeah. That was well, good. I just, he beat me up so many times. It was, it was, it was so much fun. And he and I became very, very, very good friends, but he just loved beating up weather guys. It was like, <laughs> you guys don't know what you're doing. You know, it was all, you know <laughs> I'm crazy. Because yeah. yeah. they're like, if it, if you forecast one way and then it doesn't happen because the weather is slightly fickle. Did you know that? Oh, absolutely. I'll, I'll never get it in March. We had the, the weather service on a Friday came out and said there would be this major snowstorm for New York City. And I'm sitting at home with my mouth wide open. I couldn't believe this. Tom Brokaw and everybody, all the anchors are talking about the weather service has said major snow, snowstorm for New York City. And I'm like, "Woo! I didn't see that anywhere on Friday. And the, even the National Weather Service came out, had a press conference, which they never do. And that caused Mayor Giuliani to close the city. And it was one of the first times ever he had actually closed the schools for Monday on a Friday. Okay. So when you have a complex storm system or weather, these two storms were supposed to come together and merge right over New York city. And it would have been 25, 30 inches of snow, but timing is everything. And this was on a Friday and the storm was to hit on a Monday. So now the airports are closed. The schools are closed. Government is closed. Wall street is closed all over the weekend for Monday storm, which did Remember, not happened. hit New York City. It <laughs> happened, but it hit Plattsburgh. And who cares <laughs> if Plattsburgh gets 30 inches of snow? That's nothing for them. You know? right, they're used to it. So I get I know. down to the Regis and Kathy show, and oh, it, it, I, would, I would have rather been, you know, uh, hung and quartered. You know, it was, just, <laughs> it was hysterical. But the snowstorm had missed New York City, but it had gotten all this press. And by the time Monday rolled around, you know, we were, you know, just kind of like uh, the people who got the whipping for that. And it was all the National Weather Service and all of government. And I'll never get it. It was a lot of fun, though. I did. I did enjoy it. And even though it's even one though of those, you were the whipping boy, it's like when you walk down the street in New York City, the moment you walk out the TV building, you know, you Jade and I've talked about this a million times. You get your polling data immediately on the streets of New York City. You don't need to hire any pollsters. You get it right there. They, they say to you, hey. Good to see you. Next block. Hey, great job on that snowstorm. And then the next block, you suck. <laughs> you know, this my favorite was always, I really like you. You're so great. That dress you had on the other day was awful. Oh, oh, oh. Your, your hair. What'd you do to your hair? <laughs> It'd be like, come on. Didn't you it like, like it was, it was all I did all with the president? <laughs> all about appearances. Yeah, of course. So you both are up at two thirty, and well, Bill's no, up at I was three in the morning. Jane is three twenty. I mean, uh, what is that like? I mean, I don't get. Um, I can tell you, like you had it together. It's dark. <laughs> yes, it's very dark. <laughs> I I used to stay out on Long Island as late as I could on Sunday nights, and so I was fortunate enough to have a car pick me up. Which, of course, if you're leaving the Hamptons on you know, at 2 a.m. in the morning on a Sunday, you're in Manhattan at about 2.05 or 3.05 oh, yeah. no, there's, no, there's no traffic. And you'd be trying to sleep when it's still really sunny out because you go to bed at six o'clock at night, right? Sure. I, I remember hearing those birds chirping and I go, oh. Yeah, they're so oh. passive. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it, and also, you know, um, you, you're coming in when people are coming out of bars. Mm -hmm. Oh. You really want to see a scene. Ever, remember, I've had to work 
frequently at first when I was the new kid on the block on the first day of the new year, right? So you're going to right. work. Right. That's a really painful night to be going into work at 2.30 or 3 in the morning. Oh. You, it's, you know, Thursday night, date night, and you're coming into the city and you're driving in your car and you're coming in. I, I lived out in, in Connecticut at the time. And when you would drive in, it would take about an hour to get in. But once you hit the city, you're driving by all the bars and people are lying out on the sidewalk, <laughs> you know, on the curbs. It, I was like, wow, what a way to start the day. You know, the city the never sleeps. It never, it sleeps. never sleeps. Never sleeps. <laughs> but, you know, it's, you were so you're so living on opposite ends of the clock from other human beings. I mean, I took a nap every afternoon. Did you? Oh yeah, absolutely. I took the kind of nap where you actually, you sleep so deeply you're drooling. From sure. your <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, and it was a long nap. Oh. Well, here's, here's what would happen to me invariably once a month. I'd take a nap. This would only happen in the winter time when the sun goes down at 445 and you wake up at five o'clock and it's dark and you forget that it's five o'clock p.m not a.m but you look at the clock and it says five o'clock you go oh no i'm late and you're running around grabbing getting your clothes and you're putting your I'm like, and then about five minutes into you go oh it's five o'clock in the evening oh god <laughs> oh my god well oh and you don't god. even realize that people have lives but that, that they actually go out to dinner and stay out past eight. Right. And, and yes. oh, whoa, and people will say, did you did you watch that show last night? And you'll go, no. What, oh, yeah. What yeah. show? Did you catch Letterman or did you catch, you know, Kimmel or did you catch Colbert or did you catch Jimmy Fallon? I mean, I didn't even know they had late night TV shows, actually. Right. Me either. You guys and are on the weekends, How about <laughs> on the weekends when you try, like Friday night, you're I trying mean, to stay up late huh. and you're, your head's going deeper into the plate as you're <laughs> oh my god well i i had an instance like that happen at the museum metropolitan museum of art i was invited to uh it was a, it was an art opening for uh anibale karachi and um it was a black tie event and they sat me by henry kissinger oh. and if you've ever you know really listened to henry at length uh it will put you to sleep and so this is about eight or nine o'clock at night and henry kissinger is going so I want to tell you about the Koreans. And then I was negotiating with the Russians. And so I was negotiating with China. And by this time, I'm like, <clears throat> you know, I'm sorry, Mr. Kissinger. I'm so sorry. I'll be right back. I don't want to go to the bathroom with splash water, trying to wake up. Oh you know. And then he's right back in your face. It, it, he's like, <laughs> As I was saying, I was oh working with Kissinger, and I was <laughs> I was working with Nixon. I mean, oh my I, God, I, you're a good the, impersonator. The, Who the else voice was, was like, oh, I was like, oh, Mr. Kissinger, I love you, but I'm telling you, I'm on the wrong end of the spectrum to be listening to these stories. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I still am a bad sleeper, and I wake up almost every night at 3.19. Yeah, we're damaged. Yeah. I mean, as you can tell, folks, by oh, listening to this interview, one. we are damaged. <laughs> People, we're damaged goods by being getting up at two thirty. Well, and now that you're both, well, you both have left, you know, your positions. NBC, we pivoted. NBC. We have you pivoted. Ourselves. And Jane, we know that you pivoted so well. And Bill, I mean, you pivoted what a year a year ago? Year two years ago. ago. Uh, it's coming up on three. Uh, oh. Uh, two and a half years ago, my wife and I okay. bought a radio station. And it has just been exciting and so much fun. Um, I started in radio when I was 13, so it's nice to go back to, to my roots. And it has just been a blast. We had a blast with Jane on a boat doing a radio show. For oh, that years. was such a riot. And, uh, Mary Sevilla, we just had a great time. And so owning a radio station, you know, you, you don't have to, you don't answer to anybody. Uh, you, if you want to help, uh, you want to give away some advertising to an advertiser that's hurting, you can do it. You want to help a community and do uh, PSAs, you can do it. You want to get blood drive, you can do it. You got, you don't have to go through a litany of corporate people to, you know, to get anything done. You can do so much good in the community. So we're doing a lot in Connecticut, Rhode Island, and, and on the Eastern and Long Island, and we're having a lot of fun at doing it at the same time. I bought the radio station with my wife Sandra. There were eleven employees we kept them all we bought it in order to do that to maintain the station and keep its vintage 
you know, nature and it's a legendary radio station and it's WLNG. It started in 1963 out there in, uh, in Sag Harbor at the East End. And we wanted to keep everybody. We wanted to beat corporate radio from buying it uh, and, you know, turning it into automation and, and firing everybody. And so we kept it like it is. And now we've gone from 11 employees to 21 employees. And we are just doing so many good things and having a good time doing it. You know, the Listen. thing is that most people in broadcasting probably started in radio. I know the first television job I ever had had a radio station. Yeah. And I would love, there's something about radio. And I, I think it's because maybe because we don't have this little camera and stuff, you feel a little more open. You feel like you can be more candid. You can have more fun sometimes probably not like you should have but um but but i i love radio because it's such an early form of broadcasting it was the sure. way we really first started doing this great big wonderful thing we have now well really what i wanted to do when we started doing you know i started doing morning television i started television when i was 17 i started radio when i was 13 but when i started in television and when I was doing morning television. I'd always done evenings till I came to New York. And when I was doing mornings, I convinced because, you know, Jane and, and her partner were shellacking us over at Channel 7 and the ratings at that time. Um, we, we, we wanted to do something different. So I convinced them to let me go do the weather on location around the world. And that, that changed for us and, and helped. But in that, I thought of, why don't we just do morning radio on a television news show? where we go out, we interview people, we do the weather, we have dogs, we go to zoos, we go to the Arctic Circle, we go to the West Indies, we go to you know, South Florida, we, you know, we go everywhere we can, take a camera uh, and, and have fun and do the weather at the same time, entertain and, and give people weather. And so I did that on location for 15 years. And um, you, that was, it was just still, it was that premise of taking a radio show and, and putting it, uh, the entertainment part of it on television. Well, that, I mean, I love being live on location. I mean, I, th there's such adrenaline for me in doing that. And I've always loved it um, because that just, it's so real. And also nobody's in your ear telling you what to say because, and if they are, you just pull the earpiece out, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, so sorry. I got mixed minus or whatever. I, oh, can't no. hear you. Can't hear you. No, 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 no. I'm so, like totally unaware that you you had earpieces in the whole time. Like, oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. we have a director and a producer talking to you. Right. And you that's how you hear the other anchors too. Yeah, that's how you talk back to them. But um, are you so the mic that you're wearing isn't? It's for us to hear, right? As viewers, right? Right. Yeah. And you have you, a person yeah, in you, your ear. So and the director of the show is like my best friend. So like so instead of just you, he like instead of giving me like regular cues, like you know, you got a minute. You got 30, you got 15. Right. All of a sudden I would hear in my ear, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know. And, and the so last funny. show I did at NBC, uh, the producer was also a really good friend of mine. And she say things like, she'd go, is this guest as boring as I think he is? And my ear and I'd go. <laughs> <laughs> it is sort of like broadcast <laughs> news in a way. It is, it right. is sort of like that. I mean, really, how painful is that if you have like the most boring guests? Like, how are you bringing like the story together like how what are you doing well, I, oh, I mean, well the, every yeah. interview can't be golden i mean sometimes right. you know, the interview and, and they're and they're kind of boring and the director hits the button and goes <laughs> <laughs> in your ear. henry kissinger <laughs> <laughs> so you throw it to a commercial and everybody else in the studio is going what just happened what, yeah. what's going yeah. on you're, said, you're, you're out is like back to you chuck you know <laughs> you're always you always have an out you know I have a question for both of you. So who is the most interesting um, person um, that you've ever interviewed now or met? So, um, and then I'm going to ask like musician. So most well, interesting. Ask him about musicians because his whole show is about music. I mean, yeah. so. Well, when you were on the news though, weren't you? Uh, Jane's interviewed a lot of really cool people. I have, but you know what? I always like to say that the most interesting person is the last one I interviewed because after they pile on, they just seem to all come together. I will tell you, I will tell you that probably the most poignant and compelling one I ever did was Desmond Tutu, you know, the um, South yes. African apartheid leader. 
um, or anti-apartheid leader. And so I'm sitting doing an interview with him down in by St. Luke's Church in Lower Manhattan. And we're, um, we're and, and you know, news people always want to make it fast. Like, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. And they're going, wait, we need to stop you for a minute. I'm like, no, man, come on, just let me finish. I'm almost done. They go, no, really, you want us to stop. We're going, ah! Oh! Well, they informed him that he just won the Nobel Peace Prize. So I'm going, I guess that was probably an okay to stop. And now I'm interviewing him. Tears are coming down his face. I start to cry, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it was just an interview that NBC sent all over the world because I was there at the moment he learned that he'd gotten this unbelievable um, distinction. Um, so it was really amazing. So I think that's something that I'll never forget because that in that moment in time, there was history being made right in front of my eyes. I mean, that happened. Just that sort of thing happened a lot, but this was just particularly wonderful. So special. Yeah. Well, that's a, so that's a big moment. You know, I, I didn't have any uh, big moments because most of all of our stuff had to be planned ahead of time. And just to get somebody to show up sometimes at 4 a.m., you know, was, yeah. was just a feat within itself. But most everybody would show up by six o'clock. And so... I did things like uh, I ice skated with Christy Yamaguchi and I played basketball with Patrick Ewing. Oh. Uh, I, played golf, I played golf with Tiger. Um, uh, you know, things like that, which were a lot of fun. We had a lot of mu musicians on. Uh, one of the funniest mornings we had was when we had Wang Chung on. Um, and so they were singing, you know, everybody Wang Chung tonight. And it was the morning and they changed the lyrics to everybody Wang Chung this morning. <laughs> and then they kept singing, but not this early. You know, it was so early in the morning. And uh, most everybody who got up and, and came on the show at those, that hour of, of the day, uh, you know, they, 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 they were, it was early, so they had to come with their game. And it, it was a lot of fun. I mean, we, we had, um, uh, you know, we played basketball with the then Governor George Pataki in his driveway, you know, and we, we tried to make it fun stuff like, like that, where, wherever we went, we did the weather down in Jamaica a couple of times with the with the uh, president of Jamaica, in uh, Haiti. Um, we uh, we were down in uh, South Florida. We take a week and go down to South Florida, and we would round up Ricky Martin and, and do uh, music and uh, shows like that. And so sounds like such a great gig. Yeah, oh, I think the God, most, fun one, <laughs> most fun one I ever did. And I told Jane this was was the places we went to because you can do a morning show live in new york city every day there's just plenty to do we, we had tito puentes we had uh so many of uh, musicians from new york city but i got to do the weather from the torch on the statue of liberty and that was a real wow. kick to be able to to do that because so i climbed up there when they when they were that's when it was being redone yes yeah 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 i climbed up there with remember those all those italian craftsmen they bought in sure. right speaking yeah. to i'm yeah. trying to interview them you know, and you're toppling, ready to topple over. And I'm like, so what's it like to be up here? And they go, oh, I'll do the <laughs> all right, this can be a great interview. Um, Jane, but, Jane oh, there's a question that just came in for you about yeah. the NBC holiday song. Oh, <laughs> so jingle the question bell, is, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. So, how far in advance did you guys start to prepare? Is the question for that day. And there was okay. always, and, and again, here's where the weatherman came in big time because I spent so <laughs> much money to set up all this gear on the ice skating rink. And then we'd all stand in these ranks, right? You know, so the Christmas tree was above us. Yes. And, um, but the big trick was everybody wanted to stand next to Chuck <laughs> Scarborough oh. because they knew if you stood next to Chuck, you were going to be in all the shots, right? What about Sue Simmons? Come no, on. No, Sue too. And me, you know, everybody that's on the air, because it was all the people who were behind the scenes. Yeah. Right. And then, so and it would be a riot. And then, the, and then, and we'd, and we'd do like 50 takes because they say, okay, we want you to sway. And nobody would sway in the same direction. <laughs> <laughs> but the weather guys were all and Janice were always in big trouble if it was a bad, if it was going to be a crummy day because they would have prepared for this really ex, I mean it was expensive to do that stuff I can and imagine everybody had certain times off to be able to come and you know be prepared and then if the weather sucked so what about the outfits like were you told to wear a certain coat or color bright colors just wear bright colors okay that was about it but it was fun and and when my daughter was a baby, I would bring her and hold her and she'd be, you know. Well, that's, that's awesome. Good. It was a real family thing. 
that was the beauty of being at Rockefeller Plaza because, you know, A, we had the Today Show with all of its concerts and that sort of thing. So we'd go out sometimes in the morning. Our weather people would go out and do live shots with whomever was performing that day because they'd be setting up and rehearsing um, during our show from five to seven. And so that would be really fun because they'd be down there doing um, all the, uh, you know, we just could, you, I mean, you could go down to that, you could go down to that plaza and you could talk to anybody anytime because there'd be all kinds of people down there. So that was fun. Um, and it's just such an iconic part of New York City that, that actually working there was a kick. Except, yeah. except the last week before Christmas when you became Scrooge because of that tree. Uh, and there'd be millions of people crowding around. And at one point I was anchoring the weekend news. Try getting through the crowd to get to the newscast at time and time on a Saturday night, you know, three days before Christmas. You're like, oh, yeah. it. I was going to ask, it must have been a nightmare just trying to get to work. And I, and oh, it was. It was. And you, you, you know, but, but the lighting of that tree, oh my God, the parties that are around it. And, and we, you know, we did all these live shows um, around it. And it was just wonderful. I had to talk him into once though, because they didn't want to light the tree in the morning until like seven. And so I'm like, we go on New York five. We need to have the tree lit at five. And we went round and round and round and round. And finally, they agreed to, to start lighting the tree at five. Well, thank it's, God you yeah. said that. See what I mean by having to go through all of those channels to get something done. It was, it, <laughs> it was like that. We didn't have a tree like that at uh, ABC. We, they, they put lights on the trees that were on the street corner. <laughs> <laughs> but then recently, I thought they were doing that thing at Bryant Park, right? Yeah, we were doing the thing uh, right there at Lincoln Center. And Lincoln the, Center, uh, that's right. Yeah, and that little park there is Dante Park, and they would light, light the tree there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. it was it's it's... nothing like New York City. At the no, yeah. It's no cool. matter, you know, no matter where you are, the city. And by is... the way, during the COVID, people were making a big deal saying, oh, that Christmas tree, you know, they must have gotten a really crappy one because it's COVID because they had to fill it all in. They fill it in every year. Right. Right. Who knew? I was when when that whole thing went up, I'm like, I can't believe we can't get a good tree. No, then, seriously, they fill in every yeah. I went up flying with them once to pick out the tree, which was really fun because they're, you know, they're they're very so bougie. Funny. And then we went, yeah, and then we went around and and went looking for the, you know, which one to pick. So that was pretty cool. Well, I hate to say it, but it we're out of time. No way, because we Will haven't talked about the show. Wait, just one quick thing. So the show that I was on was is yeah. lunch on the it's called like lunch on the deck, right? It's on the lunch on the deck. Yeah. Okay. And he just got picked up by Sirius. So now he's going to be on Sirius Radio 2. Yes, you are. And it's what, all what, that. Uh -huh. What channel? I'm seeing? It's channel 106, the volume channel. It's the same channel that Mark Goodman is on from, uh, remember Mark Goodman from MTV? Mm -hmm. He's been on that channel for about 17 years. And so our show runs uh, Sundays at noon. Uh, and it runs during during the the week or weekend, but it's on it's on Sirius Sirius XM 106, the volume channel. The show's called Lunch on the Deck. Uh, and uh, last week's guest was Peter Herman from uh, Younger. Yeah, he was oh, Blue yeah. Bloods. He's yeah. married to Mariska Hartigay. I uh, love her. Love her. Yep. This week we had so much fun. We've got Howard Dean who is going to be on the show. Uh, he ran for president. He was the governor of Vermont for mm -hmm. about 12 years. And we also have a musician named uh, Joe D'Elia. And Joe has done the music for two movies coming up. One of them is an Ethan Hawke movie. And the other is a movie for Willem Dafoe. He's, he's an old rock and roller from the East End. And uh, we'll have him on the show too. And he'll be playing new music from the Ethan Hawke movie and also from the, from the new Willem Dafoe movie. They come out in July, as a matter of fact. And That's you're awesome. having concerts too. One more thing, because you're doing concerts in the summer, right? In Sag Harbor? Yes. We are. Thursday nights in August, we've got concerts. We'll have uh, a lot of big artists are going to play on our stage. And that will be a lot of fun. We have a deck out behind WLNG. We're going to have concerts on Fridays from four to six at our deck in the Cove. So when you come out east this summer, you know, be sure and come by and see us. It will yep. be a blast. Well, Allie and I are going to come together and we're just going to come and yeah. twerk for you. Yeah, we're just going to be on the deck. Yeah, just, <laughs> we're just, just going to just, we're going to do lunch and dinner on the deck. Yeah. Check out the pictures. <laughs> you go to WLNG.com and you can see the pictures of our deck. It's the most yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful radio station location in the world. I love it. Well, it was really fun being on your show down in 
Lantana in Florida. Oh yeah, we're gonna do that again. I would love it. And um, we'll see you in, in SAG this summer. Yeah, so. for sure. But you have to come back. Yeah. This is a real we'll honor. Thank you very, very much. This is a real kick. Thank you yeah? so much. Well, girlfriend time is important, you know. Yes. Girlfriending. <laughs> Tell your wife, Sandra, it's all good. She can come on next time. Yeah, bring her on. Thank well, you. Um, all right. Ready, you Evans? Kisses and hugs. Bye, you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for having you. me. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.